Oh, is this the broken pieces of metal that are coming out? That's all that disintegrated metal we found within the pan and throughout the filter and stuff. And destroyed. <laughs> so that's two broken pistons. Fastest one I've ever seen one blow up. It had, um, I think 64 miles on it. Yeah. What happens? They just fall apart? It breaks the piston. It's the most common thing that happens. They just break a piston. Is there anything, a reason that breaks it or is it just, a specific thing or they just fall apart? They're just cast pistons. They oh. didn't, they're not very strong. They never should have put a cast piston Too in a boosted motor. motor. Yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, it's not, I don't want to say it's like VTEC, but that's probably the easiest way to explain it. Like, <laughs> After a ton of homework, internet digging, picking everyone's brain at good speed performance, I finally nailed down all the motor parts I need everything we need to do to get this Ringland Failure STI of mine back on the road. Today is step one. I need to wash the car and get it on the trailer so we can get it to good speed performance to start the motor teardown. Got my foam cannon ready with some soap that I'm gonna be selling to you guys soon. That is my favorite. I also have some of that same soap for washing it. It's shampoo for the car in the bucket with some water with a rag inside there. And we have the car that is super duper dirty just full of dust. It's been sitting here for a while on the side of our house. Absolutely filthy. I miss this car so much. You don't realize what you got till it's gone. And I'm thankful I have my Z that does have air conditioning. Trust me, I'm super thankful, like really thankful. But this car is so nice, man. Rios Garage expensive towel. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. This thing is amazing. I'm gonna drive the whole car with one rag and I don't have to go grab a bunch of rags and ruin them. One rag to dry, it's insane. I highly recommend this, link in the description. Tanner for having a big truck. You guys, everyone needs a friend with a big truck. Whoa. All right, I'm just hoping that that rim does not end up touching the trailer. Got her tied down so tight, the straps are about to break, so should be good.
Mike, what's good? What's good? Are you gonna hide from me? <laughs> Derek's my buddy at Goodspin. That's his car right there. That's getting fully built, I'll show you guys later. It's 9 a.m. on a Thursday. I'm a little late, actually. Cody's already gotten started. Cody, what's going on? What's going on, guys? Cody's a little tired. He's been grinding 12 hours a day trying to get Derek Subi around here going after hours. But Cody was down to fill us in on pulling this engine out in somewhat of detail, nothing crazy. But I wanted to get an idea myself and then also teach you guys. So, what uh, what so far we got the intake pulled apart a yeah, little bit. Yeah, we, we got the intake the... off, um, air pumps off. We'll get the bracket off later. Pulling the intercooler off right now, and then um, we'll probably do the downpipe after that. We need to get you a heat shield. AC compressors out of the way now. Yeah. What's going through your head now? Uh, I think I'm gonna do the fuel lines. Take the fuel lines off of the rails, get those tucked out of the way. Um, disconnect, probably just get these hoses off the radiator. Pop the radiator cap off so we can drain it when we're underneath. Um, I need to take the bolt off of the starter. So I'll probably do that next. That's the starter down there? Yeah, this is the starter. I'm just gonna take the power wire off of it. I like, I like breaking loose these top two bell housing bolts while I'm up here. I'll do the pitch stop next. Not everybody takes these out, but I find it gets everything out of the way and gives you a little bit more room. So I take them out. Whoa. Yeah, wiring harness, just un unclip that from its stand. I think it's about time I'm gonna go underneath, start doing that stuff, and then we'll come back to the top and finish it off. Radiator before you unplug it? No, I just need to open up the system so it can all drain out. Oh, gosh, we're gonna drain it. Spider webs are ready. Just taking the splash guard off. That fell off. Take off the motor mount nuts. And we'll start worrying about the rest of the downpipe. Motor mount bolts right here they did. Cody already did the exhaust for the downpipe. Just so you can see it up closer. One more bolt on the downpipe and we'll have that out. Sensors disconnected. Trying to get the wires out of the way. Oh, this is it? All right, that's all we get. I don't think the lighting is quite right. Um, you probably need to do two from both angles because you're going to get a shadow draw. Ah, uh, darn. I guess I'll have to stop the whole shoot. I would. I wouldn't bother. Okay. Plus, I mean, dude, whoever owns this car, come and clean it. Look at like you've been mudding in it. I was. It's a disgrace. Oh, is this your car? <laughs> he says, I was. Derek, your, your light, oh, your light is on. Your light is on. Look at you trying to help out. I've got like one of those, uh, those uh, neon tube lights. Uh, Did you just call it a neon tube light? <laughs> Fluorescent light bulb. 
Cody, what was that last bolt you just undid with the power? With that, um, that was extension? one of the bell housing bolt, or with the extension. Yeah. I got this bottom nut on the on the downpipe. Oh, okay, got it. I bought that long extension just for doing that bolt because it's <laughs> hard to to get to. And drain the oil and the coolant next. That was a chunk. Was it really? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was a chunk. This is already a lot less painless than I thought it was gonna be. It's really not that bad. At least when you're doing it. <laughs> I mean, I have a, you know, I've got a process that I do every time I do one. Done so many of them. Right. Are the WRXs like way different? Are they pretty much the same? No, they're, they're all pretty much the same. Pretty much any Subaru ever is the same, unless the FA models, you know? Uh. The rest of the bell housing bolts. So it'll just make it, when we get back up top, I'll leave the top one in. Leave the one on top in, so when we go up top, we can just loosen that one and it'll fall right out. Let me check out that socket you got on there. That seems pretty necessary. A little- It's a wobble socket. Wobble socket for that bell Short housing. One. Yeah, it gets, it gets in there pretty easy. Here comes the starter. Next we're gonna pop the thermostat and drain the radiator at the same time. <laughs> yeah, but he has one too. Oh really? Oh really? That's yours for sure. But he said there were two in your area this morning. Thermostat where that was, it all drained out. I always like to pop the O2 sensor out because I tend to drag it across the frame rail and it ruins it. So I just pop it out so that doesn't happen. The ground straps need to come off. Those are not the strongest thing. And I've tested the strength of them a few times. No good? <laughs> not very strong. You see where the thermostat was from this angle? Take this up here. Are we lowering it back down? Yeah, in just a minute. Um, I got one more thing I'm going on to do. Um, there's another thing that I like to do because I tend to break them again by dragging it across the frame rail when you pull the motor. Because I just like to take this this whole ABCS solenoid off. I always tend to break this this electrical connector off on the frame rail. So I just take it out real quick and get it out of the way before I have a chance to break it. Does oil go through that? Yeah. That's is, oil controlled. What does it do? That's what changes the, the pitch of the cam, or the degrees in the cam. So this is the solenoid that tells the gear what to do. All of it's oil controlled, and this is obviously an electronic sensor that talks to the ECU. Did not know that. That's where it was. Yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, it's not, I don't want to say it's like VTEC, but that's probably the easiest way to explain it. Like, they're active cams, they can move. So next, we're going to take out the, uh, the rod that holds the clutch fork. And there's a little plug on the side of the transmission. That's usually really tight for some reason. It's unnecessary pop this little plug out up here. Just a plug like that. And then take like a six millimeter bolt, six by one, and you put it up inside of the hole and then there is a shaft that this threads into. 
and then you pull the shaft out. That sound good. That's what holds the clutch fork in place. And since it's a um, since it's a pull style clutch, that's the only way to release the transmission from the engine in this application. I'll show you the, how it clips into the into the into the pressure plate to pull on it. Evos are different. Evos just have this little window that you got to stick a screwdriver through and beat with it for five hours. Mm -hmm. All right, I think I'm ready to go back down. Okay. Yeah, we're going to take the radiator out next. What are you checking my VIN for? I need your VIN. For what reason? For the parts. Oh. STI parts. Since he doesn't have an STI. <laughs> Rip, brother. Dino might be kind of loud during this video, who knows. Let's see what's going on. Cadillac. Couple bolts up top, radiator's pretty simple. Now we can see the front. I always just set the radiator out of the way. Then once the motor's out, we'll put it back in the car so it doesn't leak all over everything and cause a big old mess. So we've just got a couple more things to do and it'll be ready to pull. Pull this off of here. How deep in the motor do you think we'll get today? I'll have it tore, completely torn apart and probably just a little bit after lunch. Oh, cool. Give me a rag or two. Yep. Thank you. This bolt doesn't stay here. No, that one. Thank you. Forgot about that one. So, all we got left is basically the fuel lines and two coolant hoses, and it's coming out. Now, everybody has trouble with these fuel lines. But I can usually do them pretty easily. That's not the right tool for that. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it works yeah, better. Yeah. It works better than the right tool. Two little picks to get in those. Little, those things just snap there's on. There's two little. There's two little clips on either side, and you just gotta push the clip out of the way so it can pop around this double roll. Uh, Are we gonna do flex fuel and stuff? I don't when know. It goes back together? I'm hoping. Yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty much out of money. Yeah. <laughs> but you know that. <laughs> you know how it is. What are you doing, Cody? That's the what? Uh, just disconnecting fuel lines. That's on the low side, got it. No, this is the, where we split the system at. The engine mounts have studs in them, so. In order to get the engine clear of those, you have to either put a jack under the transmission. I like to use a jack stand when I'm on the lift, but it lifts the motor up high enough that you can slide it forward out of the clutch. Okay. That's the last bell housing bolt. That's the last bell housing bolt. See the bell housing has got some room in there now. Oh yeah, you can see the little gap. So let's get the cherry picker out. We'll start pulling it. I always, I always like to um, the last two hoses for the heater hose. I always like to pull the motor out a little bit and then take those off because it's um, you know it's a little tight back there. Just gives you a little bit more room. We need to put the hood up into service mode too. So, service mode. So to do this, you take off the strut and you take off the mount where the strut uh, goes onto. 
we're gonna move it down to this hole so you can stand the hood straight up. Uh, that's a good little Subaru trick. Most cars have that? Some. <coughs> Push her on up and click that on back in. This is a good question. Where are these bolts on to? I have three spots already laid out that I always use. I go right under the turbo where your intercooler bracket mounts to. And then two on the front to keep it even. One where the power steering, or underneath where the power steering mounts. And then one underneath where the AC compressor mounts. Okay. I forgot um, the turbo flange always gets in the way of the transmission. So I like to just loosen it up a little bit. Helps give it some room. And if you just loosen it, it gives it a little bit of wiggle room and it pops right out. Yeah. So these are those two hoses that I was talking about before. The two heater hoses right here. I don't like reusing these spring clamps. They tend to leak. So you just get new ones later? So I just use some uh, you know, some uh, hose clamps, worm clamps, hose clamps. Can we put it back together? I will use some of those. Can you? Let me do the thing. Yeah, can you jack up? You gone? Yeah. Never thought this day would come. Yeah. Should be good. Here. Heck yeah, that's exciting. That's it. Pulled this out at my house earlier in case I was wondering. Heck yeah. That was easy learning from you. That's exciting. Let's go pull it apart. It's about an hour and a half to take them out on a normal day. If you guys are newbie newbies, these. that's the bell housing. That is the transmission. Well, this is the bell That's, housing. Yeah, it's a bell housing. With to the transmission. It's part of it, so. Oh. Set that back down. Pull oh, that's up. why it was sitting up. Okay. So that was under there. Holding that up makes sense. Yeah, that would make it a lot easier to get out. Yeah, because the studs fall into the air. Uh, if you look on the bottom here, it's how there's a stud off of it. Uh -huh. And that's actually in the subframe, so you have to lift it all out of it to get it to slide forward. I see, I see. That's huge. A lot of people get stuck on that because, you know, they're trying to put the motor back in, but they don't have the transmission lifted. And they're like, why the f*** won't it go click back in, you know? Right. Perfect. And this is that shift fork that I took that rod out of oh. from the side. 
and that holds on to the throw out bearing, which is clipped into the pressure plate. And to unclip it, you have to push in and then pop that clip off. So if that rod wasn't there, you wouldn't be able to remove it. That bearing was trash because it started at squealing on me. Yeah. Yeah, it's trash. It's a little worn out, eh? A little bit. <laughs> Oh yeah. Is that nice what you'd say a, a worn out clutch? That's nice and worn out. Look at your look at all the hot spots. That's oh. that's worn out. That is a seventy thousand mile clutch, sir. Ooh, damn, those are that thing got hot. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. Previous owner, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Never me. <laughs> I wasn't launching the car. So what's the pieces of the car? Explain to me. What's what, that? One's a pressure plate. So this is the flywheel. This also is what starts your car. This is what the starter goes to. And that turns the motor to start it. You have your flywheel, you have your disc that actually is the clutch. That's what holds all the power. And then this is your pressure plate. It's got these big old springs in it so that when it's seated, it's clamping both of the pieces of metal together and this is connected to the transmission. We're gonna start with the intake and then just basically work from the top and then go to the sides and all, it's all gonna meet in the middle. Okay. That was it. You don't need that. Don't need what? You don't need that anymore. What? You don't need that anymore. Oh, that piece. <laughs> That was the air pump thing? Yeah. Cool. That'll go away. Air pump's getting deleted. What's that? That's the air pump itself. Oh, where's the This is also, too? this will, this, we gotta cut the sensor off of it because there's a barrel pr barometric pressure sensor in there. And it, the ECU needs that for tuning. Got it. What's the belt? Here's your timing belt. Do those, does those ever go bad? Yeah. Do they yeah, just dry they, out? They dry out and they'll start cracking just like your serpentine belt would. Uh. Um, we recommend doing them every about 90K. How many miles do you have? Right about 70, so about time. It's time. You always want to make sure you're on your timing marks so that when you take it apart, nothing contacts. What's your timing marks? See this? Yeah, these little lines. There's one on every gear. Um, what would make contact? The pistons, the valves hit the pistons. You can do that when you're just taking it apart? Uh. Yes, you can. So when this little dowel pin that's under here, when that's 
either straight down or straight up then the pistons are all inside of the block so you can't really hit anything on them because they're all you know halfway across their stroke so they're only ending about here now i'm just going around unplugging everything we'll take the, man the intake manifold off next make that list of little stuff I need right now. Yeah, hey, get with Derek. He'll give you a solid list. What are they called? Timing belts? Yeah, timing, timing belt, full timing set. You're gonna need a belt, a tensioner, all of the rollers. New water pump. Oh wow. What? Yeah, it's broken. <laughs> what happened? What hose is that? That goes into your watch. I bet you we take this off and it's full of oil. That's, That's the hose for the PCB system. Full of oil? It's not supposed to be full of oil? There's not, it's not supposed to be oil there. See all that oil down there? Ooh. That's broken piston. That's where my oil was going. I was wondering where it was at. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I drove it back from Yuma probably three hours on this. Yeah, it'll still run. Just use a shit ton of oil. <laughs> okay, that's all disconnected. Just this way. You can. Luckily, those are still pretty soft. Then. So break. you don't need to replace those. Okay, this one did rip. So this one's gonna need to be replaced. Put this on your list. Okay. Um, passenger side, um, front valve cover, or PCV hose, passenger side PCV hose. If a turbo goes bad, is there any potential that it could hurt the engine or not because, it, or no, because it's, yeah, it can hurt the engine. Can it throw metal in the engine? It can throw metal in the engine, and if it pushes enough oil into the intake side, and if all of that oil goes into one cylinder, it can super compress it, and it can break rods and break piston rings. And Did you work on Subaru stuff before this shot? Yeah, I've been working on Subarus for Around 10 years now. Oh. You've done this exact engine like a thousand plus times. Pro yeah, probably over a thousand times. <laughs> um, do, you ever, do you enjoy V8 stuff or anything like that or not really? I love V8 stuff. Really? I love the domestics. I'm actually, I'm getting, getting worn out with all the Subaru stuff. Yeah. Just been doing it for so long. Yeah, see, it's all the way up inside of your turbo and everything. It's probably going to be a really broken one. Really broken what? Ring land. Oh, yeah. Like half of the piston missing or something. I didn't know these things just dilapidated themselves. Yeah. That's a suck. You said most of them only got like 30,000 on it? Some dudes 20,000, some 30, some 40. The fastest one I've ever seen one blow up, it had, um, I think 64 miles on it. 64 miles ring the What happens, they just fall apart? It breaks the piston. 
the most common thing that happens. They just break a piston. Is there any thing, a reason that breaks it, or is there a specific reason, or they just fall apart? They're just cast pistons. They oh. didn't. They're not very strong. They never should have put a cast piston Too in a boosted motor. Plus a turbo on top of it. It's, they're really actually pretty low. They're only like 8.4 to one. But under boost. Yeah, cylinder pressures are way up there. There's no heat shield when you run aftermarket headers, right? Does that cause any issues? You can't run a splash pan. Oh, the it splash isn't. plan catches on fire. Really? I've done it before. It's terrifying. You had CV before your Evo? Yeah. How much, how, how early did you build that one out? Not, Not much. Knowing it, it was like, like I put it up to like 400 horse on the stock block and then it popped it. So I put a motor in it, sold it, and bought the Evo. Then I ran the Evo on 420 horsepower on the stock block for four years before it popped. And that was my fault. But. All right, so now we're gonna be cracking loose the cam gear bolts. Um, I like to do this with the belt still on it it gives it some tension and these bolts usually end up really really tight and they're really easy to strip out hopefully we don't strip any out but it's always a possibility i like to just drape a rag over it because once you pop these oil comes out usually <laughs> <laughs> but it just stops oil from getting all over all over the cam gears they're gonna need to be cleaned anyways but i don't like them being all oily another thing for your list you're gonna need a full gasket master gasket set is that for like the whole engine yeah it's for everything All right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's what good. I f like. Oh man. Are they I'm the happiest stuck? guy in the world right now. Are they usually stuck or what? Oh man, they're usually so stuck. That's the easiest ones I've ever taken off before. Really. Talk dirty to me. Oh. Right. What are those, Cody? Those are the cam gears. So, remember earlier I was telling you about that solenoid that we took off over here? Yeah. These gears have two different... So, the inner mechanism is separate from the outer. So that's why there's this big spring here. So this gear has the capability of advancing the timing up to like 20 degrees or something like that. I don't remember how much it can advance, but it, it can do a bunch of advancing. But like the one thing that like the FAs have over these is that these can only advance, whereas the others can advance and retard mm. as needed, which helps with like, you know, like big turbos and stuff you can help bring the boost in faster and it uh, you get there's lots of benefits to running variable variable timing How, are those belts spinning really fast inside there the what when you're driving the car are those belts in here spinning the belt yeah the valve the belt? belt is spinning as fast as the crank is so it's because it's directly connected to the crank. So it's the so same as the RPM then. Yeah. So your crank is rev. If your crank is turning, you know, 
a thousand times um, you know, a thousand RPM at idle, it's turned a thousand times a minute. Uh -huh. The heads only turn half that. So every full turn of the crank, the the cams only turn half a turn. Okay. But yes, that belt is spinning that fast. Oh wow. It's always annoying how much they leak. It gets on everything. I hate, I hate it when oil gets on stuff. It just annoys me. There you go. No, I said I'm not gonna call it a VTEC. I'm gonna put that the very first clip just to get everyone all frazzled. <laughs> what? It's not VTEC. It's what about. <laughs> I bet you that'll be one of your first comments. <laughs> it's not VTEC at all! This is no s***. That's the new that's the water pump, yeah? Yeah, that's the water pump. How come you need a new one? Because it's, it's um, recommended to be replaced in the same intervals that you do your timing belt. Uh, what year of Subaru did you have? I had a 2010. Not for long though. Was it a hatch or a sedan? Hatch. Was that the narrow body one? Yeah. It was the last year of the narrow body. That was another reason why I didn't like it. The actual building part takes a long time. But just putting it back in the car and tearing it apart it takes next to no time. Let's move now. Take the header off. The oil yeah, we're gonna off. do. Um, we're gonna do the header, and then um, I'll probably we'll probably pop off the motor mounts and the oil pan while we're down here, and then we'll flip it over and we'll start taking heads off. And the heads come off pretty quick. I always try to keep the parts pretty organized on my rack. Leave ourselves a nice area for, um, you know, the for the heads to sit on. And then we'll get your. We're sending your block to out front, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll get we'll get your box your box blah, 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 block boxed up. And try and get that sent out. They're pretty fast with. They're pretty good with turnaround time over there. <clears throat> we'll get the heads over to jeans so we can get those rebuilt. Heads to jeans? Yeah, your cylinder heads. Who's is jeans here local? Yeah. What does that cons consist of? It's uh, does a valve job. He'll do it the very minimum of three angle. Um, check all the seeds, make sure those are all good. And if need be, he'll regrind um, new seals. Um, and then he'll he just. He'll adjust all the valve lash for us as well because these engines are a bucket style valve lash adjuster, so it's not hydraulic, so it, it gets one set number. Wait, uh, real quick. On the unequal length headers, I just want anyone who does, doesn't understand, like, so this is the short. Yeah, this. Explain what, the, show what a, what a normal, what an equal length header route would look like. So for, for you to be working with an equal length, you know, this one's coming from all the way over here. So this one's obviously way shorter than all of this. So usually when they do equal length, they'll take this runner and then they'll bring it back and merge it about right here. So that, you know, you've only got about this much distance and this much distance, which makes it equal. But the equal length, you lose the Subaru sound. Right. Turns into a Honda. <laughs> Trash? Yep. <Yeah. clears 
Put them all back in there. No more using small oil filters either. Here, actually, we can cut this open. You want to see the carnage of inside? Heck yeah. I didn't know there was bigger ones. Yeah. Um, it's, I can show you one of the bigger ones and what size you should have on it. The bigger the oil filter you can run, the better. The more filtering it can do before it goes back inside. See all of those chunks of metal down in there? Oh, wow. Yeah. So much metal. <laughs> Fun. Thanks for cutting that open, that's interesting. Yeah, see, uh, see how shiny the tool is? Uh -huh. That's all metal. Jeez. What were you doing when you broke it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it happened when I was driving to Yuma. Like on the freeway. Because as soon as I got there, it went from, I topped it off before I left my house and it wasn't low. And then I got to my house, my parents' house in Yuma. And it was like, really low. I was like, ah, it's really hot today, that's odd. Fill her up, drove it home, noticed the idle was all rough. <laughs> Look at how much metal is in there. You can see the gray. What is it? That's the oil cooler. Wait. There's no way to clean them, and they're like 350 bucks. No way. Yeah. Bulls. Yeah, that's one thing that sucks about popping motor. I can clean the cam gears, but I can't clean this. Mm. I, I have tools to completely disassemble those so we can clean them. You'll hear people say that you can reuse those things, those oil coolers, you just gotta clean them out really good. And I've seen people blow motors because of reusing those, blow their brand new motor up. Jeez. That's not good. Everybody's usually really good at f***ing up these lips. If you know how to do it, then you can avoid putting too much damage on either side of the surface. <laughs> There's probably gonna be some metal in here, yeah? Oh yeah, there's gonna be a lot of metal in here. There we go. Yes, all of that's metal. All that gray? Yeah, this is all really fine metal. If you look, if you catch it in the light properly, you can see the shine in it. Mm -hmm. Really fine pieces. Crazy. Then we just gotta take these off and that's pretty much it. Yeah, we'll pop those off. I gotta take, we'll take the, the pickup tube and the windage tray out. So it doesn't get on everything else. There's one thing I do that a lot of people don't agree with. I throw everything into the same box because I know where it all goes. Yeah. Done so many of them. I didn't question it because you've done so many. I was like, hey, are you has. And if you run out of a bolt, you probably could easily figure it out. Yeah. I mean, if I don't have a bolt, I know where, what kind of bolt's supposed to be there. Right. What's that little guy hold? That is just, it's part of the holding the two case halves together. Oh, I see, I see. This is right where the split is. And this is a coolant passage. 
and this bolt just kind of helps ensure that that passage doesn't stretch or spread. What's been like, like we opened this up, you know, everything's fine. It might have a little sheen of metal. Do you ever open these up and they're like just destroyed? Yeah. This one was a good example of destruction. See the head gasket? Holy cow. It melted the block. It literally melted the block away and the rest of the metal from that was breaking apart from around where it melted was in the pan. <laughs> I've seen some good ones. Are those like high horsepower? Or is that normal situation? That one, that one was really high horsepower, and it um, his fuel pump died while he was in the middle of a track day. So he was in a turn under high G, and then it lost fuel pressure and it melted everything down real quick. Well, it didn't lose oil pressure, but it ran it ran itself lean. A new oil pump. we we'll get a new one of those. Um, we like to use the, the ACL one. Starting to die. <laughs> what is this guy again? This is the AVCS solenoid. It's a control valve. Throw this gasket away? No, we need that. We will keep that. Um, but yeah, it's an oil control valve, so it's controlling how much oil that gear sees. Mm. And that whole gear is oil pressure activated. It's a pretty cool little way how it works, honestly. Next, we're going to take the valve covers off. And we're going to remove the cams and then take the head off. Um, I like to remove everything from the head itself. They're, it just makes it easier on the person that's going to rebuild them. So there's not a bunch of shit in their way. And we're going to replace all the, all the seals and shit anyways. So why not take them all off now? What's this guy that we're listening up called? This is a cam carrier. So it's kind of hard to tell, but all of these are the are the galleyways. These are where your oil feeds to the cams. Oh. And that's like so cams don't have bearings. Your cam doesn't ride on a bearing; it just rides on on you know. I don't know what. The proper word I'm looking for is leaving my mind right now, but it's essentially a bearing just cut into the head. These are camshafts. These are your camshafts. Big expressions. We gotta get John on camera, he's screaming over there. What? Put your foot on that. Is that the head studs? These are head bolts. So factory doesn't use a stud. And we just loosen them. I'm just gonna loosen them 90 degrees and then we'll zap them off with the gun. You got head studs, right? Yeah. yeah. Half inch. Oh yeah. Those go in the trash. <laughs> yeah, this one's fine. That dude destroyed that one over there you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, that's what a normal one looks like. Ooh. That's the gotta be the messed that's up one. That's the one that's broken. Oh, that one's probably, 
Probably both of the ones on this side. Do you throw this away or keep yeah, it? Yeah, you can throw that away. The thing that I do that makes it easier later is while we're sitting here on the stand, I like to take all of the all of the case bolts loose. All of them. Homie's got an extension on there. <laughs> Where'd you get that extension at? Snap on? <laughs> <laughs> There's case bolts on both sides of an EJ. There's four on one side, six on the other, and there's what, seven around the case? Yeah. Closed deck, here we come. Yes, sir. Sign me up. I need to get some good before video. We can have these on the table, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll clear off this bench over here and we'll <coughs> break it down the rest of the way on the bench. Bless you. Thank you. I gotta pop the these plugs out on the front. These are the plugs for the wrist pins. Because EJs are extremely weird and the piston and rod don't get put together until after they go in the block. So there's got to be a hole that you can pull the pin out of. Wow. So they put these little block plugs on there. So you can see this one's already kind of splitting. See the crack in it already? From taking the bolts out? From taking the bolts out. One thing I like to do before I take it off the stand is just give it a little tap and make sure that it's split because it's a lot harder to hold it and hit it with the hammer on the bench. So if you can do it while it's on the stand, it saves everybody a little bit of trouble. Which bench are we gonna set it on? Uh, we're gonna use this one. Racket in here. Woohoo! HKS, nice. What's this guy? It's a studs that go into the bell housing. Um, so. We're almost ready to put it on the table. Are you gonna pick it up? Are we gonna carry it together or what? Wrist pins they're called? Yeah, they're wrist pins for the pistons. That uh, one fell on the block. This is the lock for it. This is what clips into the piston and holds the wrist pin in. Well, I have a better understanding of the wrist pin once this is apart. Yeah. What is that contraption? This is my wrist pin puller. Mm. This is a wrist pin. This is what connects the rod and the piston together. Are those reusable? No. You just get new ones? They come with the pistons. Oh. Each set of pistons comes with its own wrist pin. And we'll just walk her on over. Nose forward. No. Other way. Left. And then we'll film from this side. So now those plugs that were in the front 
these are what act as those plugs in the back. This is basically an impact screwdriver. So it, it kind of does the same thing as an impact, but instead of like a bunch of times, it only does it once for, well, every time you hit the hammer against it. And it, it cracks twists, them loose. It, it twists it while you hit it? Yeah, it's, it's spring loaded. So when you hit it, it, it's snapping the spring in it and oh. acting as like, a, like an impact. Oh, that's cool. But it only does it, you know, one time as opposed to a bunch of times and it doesn't strip the shit out of it most of the time. Why would they even put those kind of screws in there, I wonder? Subaru did a lot of stupid shit. Hell, every car manufacturer does a lot of stupid shit. Is that a snap-on tool? This? Yeah. No. Harbor Freight. <laughs> nice. I'll have to go get one. It's a good tool to have. Yeah. It comes in handy on a lot of shit. Camera's watching. A couple sockets. They're the same exact pair. I just. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you crack it early on. That's why you crack it on the stand. <laughs> See, like this bearing, you can see a couple spots. These little pin marks there. Those are from detonation. Knock. Right. Probably after the piston broke. bunch what is that uh that's four that's the bad one. Oh, is this the broken this whole yeah. side this <laughs> whole side i see all the pieces of metal that are coming out of there and the rest of all of the pieces that are missing that's all that disintegrated metal we found within the pan and throughout the filter and stuff wow yeah that and destroyed. <laughs> That's not even close to the worst one I've ever seen either. Really? Is it ever like where the top half is blown off? Yeah, I've seen this whole, I've seen this whole piece broken off. Wow. Nuts. I wonder if any others have it at all or slightly. About to find out. That one's broken. That ring is, huh? No, the. Oh, the ringland. The ringland that. I'm actually surprised it didn't break on that side. But yeah, that whole spot's broken. So that's two broken pistons. That one's good. That's number one. This three? This is three. Why are those rings all over the place? Is that how they're seated originally, or they expand and they get loose? No, this is this is how they are. The That's rings like are the rings are way the piston's a lot smaller than the cylinder, right? 
and the ring is what takes up the extra space and creates everything, all your compression. If you didn't have the rings, the piston would ever work because it needs, if the piston was the exact same size, then it wouldn't be able to move, you know? There's always an oil, a little bit of oil in between it that keeps it square as well as the rings keeping it square. This bottom ring is a control ring for oil so that oil can't come back up it. And that's where your burning oil comes from is because, say we'll go back to a broken one and this oil ring, you see how it's all bowed up right here? Yeah. So as soon as it hits oil, the oil's just going straight under there and then up into the cylinder and it's blowing it out the tailpipe. Uh. And that's that. Cool. I guess we will. We'll be are, back for assembly. Are we gonna pull the, do you just take these off? This is pretty straightforward off yeah. the shaft. We'll just take those Where's off the main later. bearing when they talk about the main bearing? These are main bearings. All of the ones on these channels are main bearings. So tell me this, when I bought the car, they, the guy that owned it before me completely stock, the main bearing went out and they replaced the short block is what they told me. Okay. How does it go out, the main bearings? Oiling issues, running it out of oil is usually the first one. So this but just got scarred up and stuff? The main bearing usually doesn't let go. The rods usually let go first. Okay. It's very rarely that you see main bearings go bad or spin. Thanks, Cody. Yeah. You're the man. We'll be back next time. For assembly. We'll put it back together eventually. Dope. <laughs>